Okay, today I'm going to talk about a uh, substance that's found in many that's found in many pre-workout formulas. Uh, unfortunately, when it's included on the ingredient list of such pre-workout supplements, it's listed in proprietary form, which is which could be a real problem, which will become clear in, in a minute. The substance that I'm talking about is called teacrine. Uh, it's included in pre-workout supplements because of its alleged stimulant effects. Teacrine is very similar to caffeine. Uh, teacrine is an, also an alkaloid, just like caffeine, and it's found naturally in the cupuacu plant, <laughs> cupuacu fruit, and the kucha or, or, uh, kuchu or kucha plant. This plant is related to cocoa and grows in the Amazon region. The Amazon's in South America, for, for those of you who don't read. Kuchu, is also, Kuchu also contains caffeine, which is structurally similar to teacrine. In fact, caffeine is converted into teacrine in the Kuchu plant. Teacrine differs from caffeine by having an additional methyl and ketone group. That's chemistry. You don't have to know that stuff, except that you should understand that this slight difference between the structures of caffeine and teacrine give te creatine some properties that are not included with caffeine, which I'll get to in a minute. Similarly, similarly to caffeine, teacrine works by binding to adenosine receptors. Adenosine is a, a natural chemical made in the body. It tends to have sedative and relaxation effects. In other words, when adenosine is high, you want to just basically lie down and fall asleep or take a nap. And uh, obviously, if you inhibit adenosine, you know, especially the, the uh, re adenosine receptors in the brain, there's two kinds. If you, if you uh, inhibit adenosine uh, activity in the brain, you're going to get a stimulant effect. And this is basically how caffeine provides a stimulant effect by blocking adenosine receptors. And it turns out that teacrine, again, because of its similarity in structure to caffeine, also is capable of blocking adenosine receptors. But unlike caffeine... Teacrine has what they call a bi biphasic effect, which I'll get to in uh, more detail. In other words, it, uh, caffeine is basically just a stimulant. But teacrine can be either a stimulant or a sedative, dependent on the dose. I'll explain more about that. Adenosine is known to produce feelings of relaxation and fatigue, as I said. However, larger doses of teacrine, in other words, small do here's the way it works. Small doses of teacrine will actually stimulate adenosine release. So small doses, such as found in kuchu tea, some people drink with a kuchu or kuchu, it's hard to pronounce, tea, uh, and they, know that they, do, they drink it to relax them. That's because when you drink the tea, the teacrine naturally contained in this stuff will actually stimulate adenosine and relax you. But that's low doses. The amount of teacrine found in uh, kuchu tea is low. When you take it as a supplement, if you take it higher doses, it has a reverse effect. It starts to block the denison receptors, and then you get a, a, an effect similar to caffeine, except the, the difference between caffeine and teacrine. Teacrine is not as sharp a, a stimulant as caffeine. doesn't hit you as hard, and also it lasts a lot longer. Whereas uh, caffeine, the effective stimulant effect of crack caffeine lasts for about maybe four hours. Uh, a, a teacrine can last six hours or more. So, But again, not as sharp as caffeine. Uh, and not only that, but lower doses, if you took, for example, uh, very often, and I'll explain why, it's a good idea to take teacrine and caffeine. However, uh, if you took lower doses of teacrine with caffeine, teacrine would actually block the stimulant effects of, uh, of the uh, caffeine, again, because teacrine would block the effects of, of, of uh, caffeine on the, on the uh, adenosine receptors. So, you know, but if caffeine can interact with the adenosine receptors, you're going to get a relaxation effect. So tea cream can actually use, be used along with theanine, which is also found in tea. Theanine and tea cream are two different things, by the way. But theanine and tea cream are both nutritional antidotes to, to caffeine stimulation, jitters, all that stuff. Both of them will work to modify the stimulation effect of caffeine. Tea cream also promotes dopamine activity in the brain. Uh, those of you who watched my past videos, I did a video on dopamine. Dopamine is a brain neurotransmitter produced in the nuclear accumbens area of the brain. It is the transmitter for motivation. D 
Dopamine is what gives you the drive to do something in life. To you know, it gives you the drive to want to train, drive to want to succeed. Dopamine also is the neurotransmitter of the sexual center of the brain. When dopamine goes up, your sex drive goes up also. When you take cocaine, the, the energizing and the extreme energy feelings you get, that's because dopamine inc decreases the breakdown of dopamine in the brain. And uh, it turns out that tea cream also stimulates dopamine activity, uh, not quite as much as cocaine. You don't want that much because now you're getting into an area where you can cause brain damage. We're talking about with cocaine. Tea cream won't do that. Animal studies also show that tea cream provides anti-inflammatory effects and also acts as an antioxidant. In fact, it increases the activity of the body's own antioxidant enzyme system, which includes superoxide dismutase, catalase, and glutathione. This is the built-in antioxidants in the body. And uh, what, what isn't generally known by most people is that these inherent antioxidant enzymes that occur naturally in the body are thousands of times stronger than any dietary antioxidant you can take. I'm talking about vitamin E, vitamin C, all of them. None of them can compare to the natural antioxidant systems of the body. And it has to be that way because your body is, is under constant oxidation assault because of the, uh, due to the production of energy in the mitochondria or the energy producing uh, portions of the cell. Uh, there's constant release of what they call free radicals, which are oxidants, which should cause all kinds of damage. The body deals by, uh, with this by having these inherent enzymes like superoxide dismutase and glutathione to neutralize the free radicals. And so uh, teacrine, by stimulating the activity of your own body's antioxidant system, is very good for your health, very good for your health. Protects your cardiovascular system and your brain. Compared to, as I said, compared to caffeine, teacrine has a longer half-life. In other words, it lasts longer in the body. It has no effects on blood pressure like caffeine does. Caffeine raises your blood pressure because it stimulates catecholamines, norepinephrine, epinephrine. Apparently, teacrine doesn't do that quite as much, so there's no effect on blood pressure. Uh, I should also point out that uh, in regard to adenosine, a little-known effect of adenosine besides uh, causing sedation and relaxation effects in the brain, uh, adenosine is also a, uh, it also dilates arteries, especially coronary arteries. So if you take, for example, too much caffeine, let's say you have uh, arteriosclerosis in your coronary arteries, you already have a narrowing of your coronary arteries. If you take a, a pre-workout supplement or drink too much coffee before you work out and knock out the adenosine, uh, the adenosine will not be able to dilate the coronary arteries when you work out. And in some cases, that can precipitate a heart attack or serious heart problems. Again, this only applies if you have already something wrong with your coronary arteries, if they're already narrow, or you have what they call ethereal sclerosis, which is a narrowing of the coronary arteries. But that's a little known effect of adenosine. It does dilate the coronary arteries. And uh, obviously, teacrine in larger doses would do the same thing by uh, inhibiting um, adenosine. It can cause some heart problems if you already have heart disease. Uh, there's no record of this happening, however, but it's a possibility. It's all teacrine, unlike caffeine, is unlikely to lead to sleep disturbances. You know, if you take caffeine too late in the day, it could cause severe insomnia. Teacrine doesn't do that. But teacrine, but caffeine and teacrine work better when ingested uh, together, as I said earlier, because caffeine increases the availability of teacrine in the body. In other words, caffeine actually makes teacrine work better. So they're a great combination. And the teacrine will kind of get, you know, provide the beneficial effects of caffeine, but take some of the edge off the stimulation, excess stimulation that's induced by caffeine. So it's a really great combination. Another great combination, which I also mentioned in a previous video, was caffeine and theanine, which again is another uh, amino acid found in tea. Uh, caffeine, theanine also takes the edge off uh, caffeine, <clears throat> and when you take them together, it actually acts as a kind of a smart drug. Smart drug. It increases uh, thinking, concentration, focus. That's caffeine at a dose of about 200 milligrams and, and a uh, theanine at a dose of 100 to 200 milligrams. It's a natural, smart nutrient combination. A 2016 human study of teacrine showed that a 200 milligram dosage increased feelings of energy, focus, concentration, motivation to exercise, and even sex drive. 
And then again, the sex drive increase was likely because teacrine increases dopamine in the brain, and dopamine is a neurotransmitter of the sex center of the brain. A st <clears throat> another study of 12 healthy humans suggested a supplement containing both teacrine and caffeine may favorably impact multiple subjective feelings related to energy and mood when compared to either caffeine alone or a placebo. It also decreased feelings of lethargy and grogginess. By increasing the activity of the brain neurotransmitters serotonin and dopamine, teacrine may provide antidepressant effects. Also, a study that just came out maybe a week ago, I mean, this doesn't even appear on any websites, found that teacrine can actually, this was an animal study, but when given to mice, teacrine seems to be able to help prevent non-alcoholic fatty liver which is going to be an upcoming topic in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. It's in epidemic proportions right now, uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver. Uh, estimated 21 million Americans have this problem. Uh, if you don't treat it, it can lead to uh, cirrhosis, which is scar tissue in the liver, same thing that alcoholics get. And it could also eventually lead to liver failure requir requiring a liver transplant or liver cancer. So fatty liver is very serious, and the mouse studies show that teacrine can actually help prevent the onset of, of a fatty liver. This is a mouse study, probably works in humans too, because the pathway in which it produced this effect involved a substance called sirtuin-3, or SIRT-3, which exists in the human body. So that's a brand new effect of teacrine that was just discovered in animals. High-dose creatine supplementation in 60 healthy humans also reduced low-density lipoprotein and total cholesterol. Low-density lipoprotein is the primary protein carrier of cholesterol in the blood. And when it gets oxidized, it's closely associated with the onset of cardiovascular disease and atherosclerosis. And as I said, uh, high-dose uh, theocrine, uh, which, is, would be, uh, which would be defined as uh, 200 milligrams to 300 milligrams, reduced LDL in humans at 60 humans. So it's good for that, too. Research in both animal and humans have demonstrated that theocrine does not result in a fatigue crash or lead to tolerance built up over time. In other words, if you a lot of times when you take caffeine or drink a lot of coffee, you get this crash because caffeine will raise your blood glucose. Uh, it'll raise your blood sugar high, uh, and then you know insulin kicks out. It lowers your blood glucose. And after a couple of hours, you, you know, your energy drops down to nothing. They call that a crash. Same thing happens with cocaine because it depletes dopamine neurotransmitters, and you also get a crash when you use, you know, cocaine and methamphetamine. You get this crash where you feel absolutely terrible. You know, you, you, you just don't feel like the horrible depression sets in. Tikri does not cause any kind of crash. And, and uh, while they say that caffeine, you get a tolerance to caffeine after time, in other words, People that habitually drink uh, coffee every day, after a while they get no stimulation effect from it whatsoever unless they stop drinking coffee or stop ingesting caffeine for at least a month or two. Then they could you know, take the caffeine and get a stimulant effect. More recent studies show that that's false. There is no real tolerance to caffeine. It's a bunch of nonsense. So, but, but in regard to tea cream, there is no ever, there's never any tolerance. It, does, you know, it's, it always continues to work. Just like ephedrine did, ephedrine, the old fat-burning uh, substance, there was never any tolerance built up. It continued to work as long as you used it. Tecrine appears to have, like I say, a biphasic res uh, response, meaning that if you, if you ingest it in lower doses, such as found in that, uh, that tea I mentioned earlier, kuchu tea, when you drink it in the tea form, it acts as a sedative because it stimulates adenosin, which I said, in the brain, this is like a natural relaxation substance. It, it makes you feel tired, makes you want to fall asleep. You don't want to do anything when you're on a denison. And the kuchu tea will, will relax you. It's good, for example, if you're under a lot of stress, you're under a lot of anxiety. However, as the dosage of tea cream goes up, it has a reverse effect, and it starts to block the adenosine receptors. In that sense, now it causes a stimulation effect, because by blocking adenosine, you relieve fatigue, relieve the sedation effect, and you have an energizing effect. So that, that's what they call a biphasic effect. Low doses relaxation, high doses stimulation. It's that similar. It's that uh, e easy to understand. Uh, what's the recommended dosages in humans? The recommended dosages are 50 to 300 milligrams a day. 50 milligrams or more towards the sedation side. You know, in other words, if you take 50, some people might get a little bit of a stimulant effect. Most people will get a, a more of a less slight sedation effect. 
uh, the stimulant effect really kicks in at doses of 100 to 300 milligrams a day. Coincidentally, today, before doing this video, I actually used tea cream myself for the first time. <laughs> I, I actually took, uh, I, I was uh, didn't have time to eat. I had a couple of things I had to do. So I, I, I uh, popped a 100 milligram uh, pill of uh, tea cream. And sure enough, I got to tell you, it did have a mild stimulant effect. It wasn't, I'm speaking again, this is anecdotal. This is the way it, I've only used it this one time. I just, one, ta one capsule I used today. And it did have a mild stimulation effect. It, uh, I did notice increased focus and concentration, not not to the point of being like a smart nutrient. I didn't feel any smart or anything like that, but it definitely kind of stimulated my brain because I had, had had no food in maybe let's say 11, 12 hours, and I knew I wasn't going to eat till I got back. So I took the tea cream to keep my brain sharp, and it seemed to do that. Again, that's one person's experience, and that was on a hundred milligram dosage. Doses, is, doses, like I said, doses below 50 uh, milligrams can be considered lower and relaxation-inducing, while doses closer to 300 are stimulatory. So that's about it for tea cream. Uh, I've seen a couple of articles uh, uh, on the internet written by people who are calling tea cream a fraudulent substance because it's it's usually touted as a stimulant similar to caffeine, and they are saying that it's it's more of a, a sedation effect. However, I think this is caused by an incorrect reading of the research on tea cream. If they would have read the research more carefully, they would have found that tea cream is indeed a relaxation and sedation substance when ingested at low doses. Again, 50 milligrams or less or taken in the form of kuchu tea. Yeah, it's a, sed it's a sedative. But when you take it in doses of 100 to 300 milligrams, it reverses and acts as a stimulant. So that's, that's all you need to know about tea cream. Uh, theocrine is sometimes listed as a smart nutrient. Uh, I, 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 that's kind of borderline. I mean, it does stimulate your brain. <clears throat> so I guess you could, if you consider caffeine a smart uh, substance, you would have to also consider theocrine. But it, uh, in my opinion, it doesn't work nearly as well as the actual straight uh, smart nutrients and drugs, which I've discussed in previous videos. So that's it for theocrine. Uh, you might, you know, keep it around if you want to try it. You could take, uh, any of you have a sensitivity to caffeine, you find it too stimulating, or if it gives you insomnia, tea cream would be a very good option. But remember, you have to take a dosage of at least 100 to 200 milligrams. If you take less, it's going to have a sedative effect. So if you want more information on nutrition, exercise, science, supplements of all kinds, fat loss techniques that work, anti-aging research that can, you can use today to slow down the aging process. <clears throat> For example, in my Applied Metabolics newsletter, I'm going to have an upcoming article, the most intense in-depth article ever written on skin aging, how to prevent it, why it happens. This is a fantastic article for anybody who's you know over 40 or even 30 starting to get facial aging like some of the sun worshippers. Anybody who lies in the sunlight is eventually going to have a lot of aging effects on their face. But in this article, I'm going to talk about ways to prevent that and, you know, why it happens. Extensive article, stuff that's never appeared in any late publication. I also cover hormonal therapy in my Applied Metabolics newsletter, ergogenic aids, uh, uh, exercise science, women's health, just about I cover many, many different subjects. Unlike other digital publications, which may cover one or two subjects like nutrition or exercise, I cover the waterfront. I cover nutrition, exercise, and many other subjects. I have I have articles on things that can help save your life, such as how to prevent cardiovascular disease, cancer. These are techniques that are not appearing anywhere else on no website, no blog, nothing. They're only going to be in my newsletter. How do I do this? Because I have 57 years of, of, of intense study and experience, 42 years of a professional writer. I know where to find this information. I know how to write it in readable English without excess technical ease like some of these other digital publications where you have to have a science degree to understand what they're saying. I write in English. Anybody with a sixth grade education will be able to easily understand my newsletter. However, it is very extensive. It's very in-depth. It's not like these videos. These videos are just overviews. I go into much more depth in my newsletter. Uh, and uh, it's 40 to 50 pages every month, more like a monthly ebook. If you subscribe, I will uh, I will send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page. Also, subscribers to Applied Metabolics can send me brief questions 
via the email portal on my Applied Metabolic site. I'll answer them. I don't answer unsolicited questions. In other words, questions submitted by non-subscribers. I'm sorry, I don't. I will not answer them. I don't. I only have time for the subscribers. Same with the comments under these video. You're welcome to leave comments. Uh, the odds of me answering them are very slim, to be honest with you. I mean, if you look at uh, videos, and I've done this, look at uh, YouTube videos by other people that are known to have some degree of knowledge or educational experience, you'll notice that these people almost never respond to comments at all. Never. They never respond to them all. I do occasionally. I, you know, if it's a compelling question or something that wasn't clear in the video, I might respond. But in most cases, I will not respond to comments. I appreciate, uh, you know, nice comments. Uh, anything, that, you know, objective uh, uh, criticism is okay, too. Uh, don't tell me about the lighting or get a better camera because, uh, you know, I'm not a video maker. I, I do this just for, I'm giving you free information. You're not being charged for it. You know, uh, I'm doing this to actually to help promote my newsletter and also to give you free and accurate information. You know, don't look a gift toss in the mouth by complaining about my uh, my uh, microphone or my uh, or my uh, lighting or my background. I'm not again a professional video maker. I don't have video. It's not my thing. You know, I'm just doing this for the reasons I just said. If you want to have the uh, again, please subscribe to my Applied Metabolics newsletter www.appliedmetabolics.com If you want to have the best friend you ever had, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. Take care.